Hi there, I'm Jen, this is Remembered Reads, and this is going to be my wrap-up for the first half of September. So the first thing that I read during this period was volume 12 of What Did You Eat Yesterday? which is the cuisine manga series about this middle-aged couple who cooks at home to save for their retirement. The recipes in this particular one included apple muffins, stir-fried chicken and turnips, red squid in an avocado rice bowl. This is one of the few cuisine mangas that I've seen at least it's been localized and translated into English, that does recipes that are everyday recipes. A lot of the books I've seen do restaurant menu type fancy baking. Every time I read one of these I want to go and do some work in the kitchen. Story-wise I wasn't as impressed with this as I have been with some of the past volumes, but uh, cooking-wise I was thoroughly entertained. After that C.C. Bell's El Defo, which is a kind of all-ages graphic memoir about her childhood growing up deaf in an era when the hearing aids were really enormous. She portrays everyone as rabbits. I wouldn't say it carries a lot of symbolism outside of giving everybody big ears, so it, it's less of an interesting choice than I think some books that use anthropomorphized animals as humans, but I mean other than that I thought it was very cute and it does a great job of capturing that time, time and place and you do feel a lot of her childhood pain and curiosity and yeah it was a very cute book and I think it was interesting among uh, a lot of the popular deaf memoirs that you see in that she is lowercase d deaf and not part of deaf culture. There are parts in this where she talks about not being happy with the assumption that people assume that because she's deaf she speaks sign language, which she doesn't, she's not part of that culture. And there's a bit of discussion of that in the end, and I thought that was interesting because I feel like there's sort of a move away from that style of that non-cultural deafness, which is interesting because I feel like once upon a time that was the primary narrative and that then that's shifted, so it's interesting to see that. And again, cute bunnies, and I mean it's a solid book for kids. So after that I read My Brother's Husband Volume 1 by Gengora Tagame, who interestingly is not known for this kind of narrative fiction. He is generally known as an artist and writer who does what I think is probably best described as hardcore porn. So it was kind of funny to see someone with that history writing what is kind of a lovely family story, a very touching family story. This is about a man who's a single father after being divorced. His parents passed away when he was a teenager, and his twin brother, who he hasn't seen in 10 years, has just died in Canada. And his brother's husband comes to Japan to meet them, to see the places that where he'd grown up and all of that. And it's mostly about the character thinking about his brother and thinking about their relationship and wondering how family turns out because at the same time he's also somewhat still in love with his ex-wife and that creates a certain drama and he's working out his feelings of he's not someone who you would necessarily describe as, as homophobic in kind of an antagonistic way but he has that kind of a certain set of cultural assumptions that he's trying to work through as his brother-in-law is staying with them so there's that and then there's also the fact that he's still in love with his ex-wife and he's trying to work through that while he's also running the business that he inherited from the parents and raising his daughter. So it's a really moving family story and very, I think, relatable. It's uh, one of these things where he's not always making the best decisions, but you can always see where he's coming from. So I thought that was really impressive, especially considering that the author is, you know, generally known for drawing porn. So really lovely art. Um, I wish I'd taken some screenshots now, I've returned to the ebook. Really detailed art style and lovely story. So after that I moved on to reading some actual book and I read the second volume in Richard K. Morgan's A Land Fit for Heroes series, which is The Cold Commands. I was super impressed with the first one of this. This is grimdark fantasy about three characters who are all trying to prevent what is sort of an end of the world situation. and. There's a lot of blood and a lot of gore and a lot of explicit sex. You know, remains of dragons and boats and fighting. And This does grimdark fantasy in a really well-written way. These are not endless books. This is a little bit longer than the first one was, but it's still under 500 pages, which in any kind of epic fantasy in any of the subgenres I respect. And this is 
I, th I still believe really tightly written. I enjoy all three of the main characters, even though none of them are particularly great people. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the third book in this series. So after that, I picked up a short book that got out of the library, out of the library which is We Gonna Be Alright by Jeff Chang. The subheading is Notes on Race and Resegregation. This is a series of essays. I hadn't realized when I started reading it that it is very much a follow-up to a book that he published, I think, three years ago called Who We Be, because this is very topical and very immediate. All of the essays are dealing with, primarily with one exception really, are dealing with issues in U.S. race relations that have happened within between 2014 and 2016. And there are a few references back to where he's saying, you know, since I've written his last book. So I, I felt like I probably should have read the other one first. I do have that one on hold from the library as well, and I probably should have held off on reading this until I had read that, because it is definitely framed as being a follow-up. That said, I did think all of the essays in here were interesting. He is talking about, for example, the evolution of the Black Lives Matter movement. He's talking about some of the discussions around the Oscars so white hashtag that was going around, and then also the not your mule hashtag that went around. Interesting discussions. Again, not very long. It's a short book of short essays, but interesting stuff. There's also one about the evolution of Asian American identity, and I thought it was interesting. It reminded me a little bit of some of the essays in Eric Liu, who wrote The Accidental Asian, which was interesting because this is a different perspective, because um, Jeff Chang is a multi-generation American from Hawaii, whereas that author was second generation, and so there's sort of a different angle in the identity discussion, which I thought was interesting. I'll be interested to read the book that this is a follow-up to, because I did feel like I was missing some of the context by not having read that first. And then finally, just this afternoon, I finished the first collection of criticism by a living female rock critic by Jessica Hopper, which given the title, I expected to be a little more meta than it is, but it is genuinely just a collection of her music writing. I feel like after reading something like this, I need to confess that I'm on the fence about music criticism. And I don't really know why. I can't explain it. I really enjoy a lot of theater and film and literary criticism, and I always feel with good critics who are watching movies or reading novels or, or reading nonfiction or watching plays or operas, you can read those critiques, and even if the writer hated the product, if they're a good critic, you can read that and tell if it's something you're going to enjoy and vice versa, that maybe they love something and you can tell that you're going to hate it. And I've always felt that music criticism somehow, at least in terms of recorded music, it's a little bit different if someone's reviewing a show. In terms of reviewing albums or reviewing sing singles, I've never f had that same feeling. I always feel like there's something else, so much more taste specific. And I don't know if that's fair, but I feel like I have to say that up front when I talk about a book like this, which is a collection of music criticism primarily, although there are some interviews and a couple of more memoir -y bits and some more journalistic bits. But So I had a hard time with some of that because in a lot of cases I don't, I didn't find the writing to be super compelling enough that if she was writing about an artist that I wasn't particularly interested in that it would draw me in. That said, there is one, one of the essays in here is about how the concept of selling out has evolved and how as the supremacy of record labels and big sales has shifted away and there are more smaller labels and there is less of a stigma attached to having a song in advertising. I found that really interesting. There were also a couple of interviews in here that were interesting, but for a lot of it I couldn't bring myself to care. I definitely think, especially if you are interested in current day popular music, or if you were someone who was very into grunge in the early 90s, I think this probably would appeal to you a lot more than it did to me. But I would say about a third of this I thought was super interesting, and the remaining 60% I was fairly meh about. But your feelings towards music criticism and your feelings towards those particular genres of music might make this much more entertaining, or much less entertaining, depending. So that was my week and a half. I did quite a bit less heavy reading than I normally do, which is primarily because I spent last week, oh, pretty much all of last weekend, finishing up The Technomancer, which is a game from Spiders, which 
I quite enjoyed it is flawed. There is a lot wrong with this game in terms of mechanics, but uh, I found it quite enjoyable. It was sort of like Dragon Age 2 for me in that both that it's that same genre and also that it was a flawed game that I consider to be quite entertaining. That's not particularly on topic, but uh, yeah, so that's been the first half of the month for me. How has your September been going? And yeah, now I'm, I guess tomorrow we'll be seeing everybody's Friday reads, so looking forward to those. That's it for now. Ciao.